Hey guys, this is Jason Tino, and we have the throwing mechanism. So there are six phases of the throwing mechanism. The first phase is the wind-up, the second phase is the stride phase, the third phase is arm cocking, the fourth phase is arm acceleration, the fifth phase is arm deceleration, and the sixth phase is the follow-through. So to start, we're going to talk about the three bones that make up the shoulder girdle, and the first one of those is the humerus. The second one would be the clavicle, which is an elongated S. And finally is the scapula. Next, there are four muscles that make up the rotator cuff in the shoulder. Those include the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis. These all work together to stabilize the head of the humerus. So first is the supraspinatus. Um, it's, res it's responsible for ab abducting the shoulder, and it's innervated by the suprascapular nerve C4 through 6. Next is the infraspinatus, which main action would be lateral rotation and adduction of the shoulder, which is nerve innervation suprascapular C4 through C6. Following that is the teres minor, which is responsible for laterally rotating and adducting the shoulder, and it's innervated by axillary nerve C5 and C6. And lastly it would be the subscapularis, which main action would be medial rotation of the shoulder, and it's innervated by nerve upper and lower subscapular C5 through C7. There's a plethora of other muscles that are involved that help um, throughout the throwing motion, and those include the deltoid, trapezius, the latissimus dorsi, teres major, both rhomboid major and minor, levator scapula, serratus anterior, both pectoralis major and minor, biceps brachii, triceps brachii, and the coracobrachialis. So first is the deltoid, which main action would be shoulder abduction and is innervated by nerve axillary C5 and C6. Following that is the trapezius, which is responsible for head and neck extension, as well as neck lateral rotation and flexion. And it's innervated by cranial nerve 11 and ventral ramus C2, 3, and 4. Third would be the latissimus dorsi, which main actions include extension of the shoulder, adduction and medial rotation of the shoulder, and is innervated by the thoracodorsal C6 through C8 nerve. Following that is the teres major, which is responsible for extension, medial rotation, and adduction of the shoulder, and it's innervated by the lower subscapular C5, 6, and 7 nerve. Next would be the rhomboid major and minor, which main actions include adduction, elevation and downward rotation of the scapula, which is innervated by the dorsal scapular C4 and C5 nerve. Next is the levator scapula, which is responsible for head and neck extension, as well as scapular elevation. And it's innervated by cervical C3 and 4 and dorsal scapular C4 and 5 nerves. Following that would be the serratus anterior, which main actions include abduction, upward rotation, and depression of the scapula, which is innervated by the long thoracic nerve C5 through C8. Next is the pectoralis major, which is responsible for adduction and medial rotation of the shoulder. The upper fibers of the pectoralis major are innervated by the lateral pectoral nerve, numbers C5 through C7. The lower fibers are innervated by lateral and medial pectoral nerves C6 through 8, as well as T1. Following that would be the pectoralis minor, which main actions include depression, abduction and downward rotation of the scapula, which is innervated by the medial pectoral with help from lateral pectoral branch C6 through C8 as well as T1. Following that is the subclavius, which is responsible for depression of the clavicle and elevation of the first rib, and that's innervated by the subclavian C5 through C6 nerve. Next would be the biceps brachii, which main actions include shoulder flexion, flexion of the elbow, supination of the forearm, and is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve C5 and C6. Next you have the triceps brachii, which is responsible for shoulder extension, elbow extension, and shoulder adduction, and it's innervated by radial C6 through 8 and T1. And lastly is the coracobrachialis, which means actions are flexion and adduction of the shoulder, and the nerve innervation would be the musculocutaneous C6 and C7. So this is a list of ligaments that are also in the shoulder and are present throughout the throat mechanism. They include the acromioclavicular, coracoacromial, coracoclavicular, coracoacromial, 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 co
anterior sternoclavicular, interclavicular, costoclavicular, radiate, and finally the glenohumeral ligament. So these are just a couple slides of the pictures of all the ligaments and what they do and where they are. And so the first phase of the wind, the first phase of the throwing motion is the windup. So the windup is the initial stage of throwing a ball. It takes about 1.5 seconds out of the two total seconds to throw the ball. And most of the power is generated by the lower extremity and the shoulder stays fairly stabilized throughout this motion. And because of that, the windup phase has the lowest risk of injuries which vir with virtually no complications whatsoever. Um, so some of the muscles that are involved in the, the windup of the throwing motion. Um, so the main action that occurs throughout this whole motion is stabilization is the glenohumeral joint, and those muscles include the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, subscapularis, trapezius, serratus anterior, as well as the deltoid. So during the windup, the, there's scapular upward rotation and elevation, as well as shoulder abduction. So there's two different portions of the windup movement. Uh, the first is concent the concentric portion, in which the upper trapezius is responsible for scapular a deduction, elevation, and upward rotation. The serratus anterior is also responsible for scapular AB duction and upward rotation. And the anterior deltoid also AB ducts the shoulder. So during the beginning of the windup, this is however the thrower decides to move it. So for example, some pitchers are submarine, so they throw from a lower arm slot, whereas some come from three quarters and throw more like a quarterback might. And then during the eccentric portion uh, of the windup, the upper trapezius. So each muscle basically does the opposite of the concentric, obviously. So the upper trapezius is responsible for scapular abduction, depression, and downward rotation. The serratus anterior is responsible for scapular adduction and downward rotation. The anterior deltoid also helps with scapular adduction. This is the ending of the windup, and this is when the pitcher comes set. So they're about to start. So the second phase would be the stride phase of the throwing me mechanism. So this phase is between the pitcher picking their load foot up or their front foot up off of the ground and stretching the leg all the way out to plant their foot. So this is the key phase for gaining momentum and velocity for the pitch or throw. So the key injury that can happen during this portion of the throwing mechanism is glenohumeral instability. And this may be as a result of uh, laxity within the ligament, a damaged glenoid labrum, weak muscles surrounding the glenoid uh, capsule and the cavity, or poor neurological supply. So the muscles that are involved in the stride phase of the throwing mechanism would be the deltoid, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the serratus anterior, as well as the upper trapezius. But th uh, throughout the stride, the deltoid and supraspinatus are responsible for abduction of the shoulder. The infraspinatus helps with external rotation of the shoulder. The serratus anterior upwardly rotates the scapula and the upper trapezius elevates, upwardly rotates, and adducts the scapula. The third phase would be the arm cocking phase. Um, so this starts when the lead foot plants onto the ground. This is also where maximal external rotation of the shoulder happens, as well as posterior rotator cuff and latissimus dorsi generates posterior humeral force to prevent glenohumeral joint dislocations and subluxations. So a key injury that can happen during this phase is internal or posterior glenoid impingement. And this is where the rotator cuff tendons are compressed by the acromion process. Um, during this, the structures within the glenohumeral joint themselves are also impinged, and both are primarily caused by joint instability. So the muscles that are involved in the arm cocking phase include the deltoid, the pectoralis major, the latissimus dorsi, subscapularis, triceps brachii, serratus anterior, the trapezius, rhomboid major and minor, and then the pectoralis minor. So throughout this movement, during the concentric phase, the deltoid is responsible for shoulder AB duction. The pectoralis major is responsible for shoulder horizontal AD duction. Triceps brachii, it does late cocking, which helps with elbow extension. The trapezius assists with scapular AD duction, and the rhomboid major and minor both help with scapular AD duction. 
So for the eccentric phase of the arm cocking motion, the pectoralis major does shoulder internal rotation. Um, the latissimus dorsi also does shoulder internal rotation, as well as the subsapularis. Triceps do the early cocking and elbow flexion. The serratus anterior does scapular abduction, and the pectoralis minor also does scapular abduction. The fourth phase is arm acceleration. This is at the point where maximal torque of external rotation is occurring. So a key injury that can happen during this phase in the throwing mechanism is the fraying of the glenoid labrum. So the picture on the left um, illustrates like a partial glenoid labrum tear, whereas the picture on the right is a full tear. So I thought it was a good picture to throw up on there to see the comparison. And also what you might look at if you're looking at an MRI to try to um, evaluate what might be going on in an athlete. So for the concentric phase of the arm acceleration, the deltoid does shoulder abduction while the infraspinatus does external rotation of the shoulder. The fifth phase is arm deceleration. So this is where the highest phase of torque occurs. Um, the center of gravity moves from the rear foot to the front foot of the body. Key injuries that can happen during this phase are superior labrum anterior to posterior tear, also known as a slap tear a teres minor strain, or a biceps and brachialis strain. So the muscles involved in arm deceleration include the infraspinatus, the teres minor, the teres major, the deltoid muscle, as well as the latissimus dorsi. So during the eccentric phase of this movement, the infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major, deltoid, and latissimus dorsi all decelerate horizontal adduction and help with internal rotation. And then the last phase, or the sixth phase, would be the follow-through phase. This is when the body becomes rebalanced, and all the forward motion is stopped, so the pitcher is, or the thrower, excuse me, is trying to prevent all their momentum from continuing forward. So some of the key injuries that are involved in this would be the superior labrum anterior to posterior tear, or a slap tear, a teres minor strain, or a biceps and brachialis strain. And during this uh, phase in the throwing mechanism, all the muscles involved return to the resting state. Those are our references. Yay, very good. Hey guys, so it's Chase, you know, um, my model. And uh, so to kind of expand upon what I was talking about in class, I wanted to basically just draw on each of the muscles that are active throughout the throwing motion. That way I could give you guys a better idea of where they're located. So to start with, we have the supraspinatus, which is right here in red on Tina, and that is just superior to the spine of the scapula. And the main action of that is abduction of the shoulder. Following that is the infraspinatus muscle, which is right here in like this nice teal color. And the main action for that is lateral rotation and adduction of the shoulder. Next is the teres minor, right here in the black on Tina. And that's responsible for lateral rotation and adduction of the shoulder. And then the subscapularis, difficult to palpate, probably nearly impossible to draw on um, unless we cut Tina open. Um, you usually have to pay for that. But um, the main action for that is medial rotation of the shoulder. There's also a long list of other muscles associated with the throwing motion. So we're also going to delve into those. To begin with is the deltoid. Here in the purple, I tried to get, make sure I got all three sides of it, anterior, posterior, and lateral portions of the deltoid. And the main action of that is gonna be shoulder abduction. Next is the trapezius, which is a very big muscle. Um, it's responsible for head and neck extension as well as neck lateral rotation and flexion. And that is right here in the navy blue. So it starts up here, goes all the way over here, pops down there, that big muscle right there. Following that is the latissimus dorsi, another big, broad back muscle. Um, and that's responsible for extension, adduction, and medial rotation of the shoulder. And in Tino, that is the brown. Here, comes all the way down through here. Then you have the teres major, which is responsible for extension, medial rotation, and adduction of the shoulder. And that's right here in the green, right below the teres minor. Following that, you have both rhomboids, minor and major. 
So unfortunately, I made the mistake of making them very similar in color to the Super Spinatus. Um, but the rhomboid made, minor, excuse me, is right here, this portion. And the, min, the major, excuse me, just below that in this portion with the orange. So minor, major. Those both adduct, elevate, and downwardly rotate the scapula. The levator scapula is this green right here, all the way up here. To, all the way to the superior angle of the scapula, and those help extend the head and neck and also elevate the scapula. Then you have the serratus anterior, which is right here, pink on Tino. A little bit more, please. Right here, it's responsible for abduction, upward rotation, and depression of the scapula. Then you have the pectoralis major, big on Tino. It's in this pink right here, pretty easy to see. That's responsible, excuse me, for adduction and medial rotation of the shoulder. Following that is the pectoralis minor here in the green. Did my best guess. Um, the main actions for that are depression, abduction, and downward rotation of the scapula. And you have the subclavius, subclavius, which is right here in the brown of the clavicle. That's for depression, responsible for depression of the clavicle and elevation of the first rib. Biceps brachii right here in that kind of like teal color to get both heads in it and that's responsible for both sh shoulder and elbow flexion as well as forearm supination and on the posterior side of the arm is the triceps brachii um, again i tried to make sure i got all three heads in there and that's responsible for um, shoulder extension elbow extension as well as um, shoulder adduction and finally the last muscle coracobrachialis right here in this nice little like lime green color and that's responsible for flexion and adduction of the shoulder so that's all if you guys have any questions uh feel free to let either one of us know and hope this helped